I need to know if I'm able to catch this flight and get this body snatched or if I need to not go and waste my time. What's up y'all and welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to be another surgery type of video but this is going to be a sit down video i'm just going to spill the tea on my doctor the surgery center and just the whole process and my honest review and just a few tips um if you are planning to get cosmetic surgery so make sure you guys like comment subscribe and let's just get right into the video um oh if you didn't know my name is brie <laughs> My name is Brie. Um, for those of you who are new to my channel, um, so I just recently got a Lipo 360. I am eight days post-op. Um, so yeah, um, I'm just gonna give my doctor info, um, the surgery center, and just kind of give an honest review. So many people have been asking, so I decided to just do a video. That way y'all can reference it and watch it and take what you want from it. So I had um, a lipo 360 with Dr. John Sampson. Um, he is at Seduction Cosmetic Surgery Center in Miami, Florida. Um, and the reason why I chose Dr. Sampson, for one, is because I liked his work. Um, for two, like he works on thicker girls. He does have a higher BMI and he works on girls that I felt like looked like me, had my body type and were just bigger girls. Um, and then of course I did my research on him and I just felt comfortable with him. I also know of somebody that went to him and she had really good results. So I chose to go with him. Um, now let's get into the cost. So I put down a $500, no, I put down a $250 deposit. It was like a special going on. So I put down $250 in October um, and that's to lock in your price um, and then you put down another 250 to lock in your date so like mm, I put that down in October so December I put the other 250 down um, to lock in my date um, and so in total my surgery was $3,500 and that's because I just got lipo 360 so it's $3,500 so the day before surgery pre-op i had to pay another 521 dollars because um you have to take a pregnancy test a covid test a drug test a nicotine test like you have to take a bunch of tests and then um you have to pay for your post-op package which is one massage and then you get two garments which is fajas which is the garment you wear after having lipo me took all that um so in total that i paid to the surgery center i paid four thousand twenty one dollars four thousand twenty one dollars even um so that's total that i paid to the surgery center now when we get to talking about overall costs that it cost me to have the surgery and travel to the surgery and have all the necessary stuff that i needed um I paid $700 for my room, so that's $4,700. Um, my rental car was four, so that's $5,100. My massages um, that I had in Miami, outside of the surgery center, I had two massages and, I, and then I had tape added to my stomach. That was $5,100. 52, 5400 adding that. Um, so all together, including the massages I've gotten since I've been home, so far I am at around $6,500 total for surgery. That's including, um, no, about seven. That's including flights, rental car, supplies, food while I was there, massages, all of that. Um, gas, just everything I've spent so far. And I still have a lot of money to spend because I still have to get massages. Like I still need to be going at least three times a week to get massages. So just keep in mind when you are um, 
book in surgery once you pay for the surgery there's still a lot that goes into it if you're not going in your city you got to book rooms or a recovery house or airbnb you got to have a rental car you cannot get picked up from surgery in an uber cab no type of public transportation you have to get picked up by somebody that came with you so you have to give them the name and the phone number and they have to come get you like you ain't no sneaking to no uber like there's no way um, so you have to pay that, then your food while you're there, then your massages, and then just all the type of stuff. Um, so yeah, that was the cost. Aftercare, I would say, is like most expensive. Like, do not get surgery if you cannot afford to stay off work. One, stay off work to heal. Two, afford to get your massages. Your massages are key. You can get like really sick. You can get fibrosis. Your stomach will be lumpy. Like you really can get messed up if you don't take care of yourself after surgery. Like it's so important. You won't get the maximum results. You can also kind of ruin your results. So it's like, sis, like make sure you save that extra, I would say an extra um, outside of the surgery cost and the flights and all that, when you get home for your massages, I would say you need at least a good fifteen hundred to two thousand dollars um, for massages and just aftercare if you want to get your maximum results. Um, so that was the cost, um, and then now I'm just gonna give y'all a little bit of rundown on how the surgery center um, in itself was. So everything was good with the surgery center like so when you book you get um assigned a coordinator and this is the person you communicate with about your surgery or any concerns or whatever so you they give you their phone number um you could text them you can call them or whatever they have an extension um and they just kind of give you all the guidelines as it gets closer like okay you need to get ready to do your labs we need this we need that um and then they also can collect the payment so with my surgery center, you get an online portal. On this portal, it has all your documents, all your papers that you e-sign. Um, it has your balance and then it gives you the option to pay. And then it has a countdown timer with how far your surgery is, like 15 weeks, two days, and so many hours like that. And then it also has your doctor and then just information about the surgery center. Um, so everything was good up until I pay my full balance off. So you used to be, or with other surgery centers, you pay your remaining balance at pre-op. So the day before surgery. Um, but for some reason, my surgery center changed. So they made me pay my remaining, um, balance 30 days, no later than 30 days. So I paid my other 3k, um, a little bit probably like 40 days before surgery or whatever. After that, um, then when I got to close to my 30 day mark, they're like, okay, here's all the labs you need. You need to take these to your primary or to a lab and go get your labs done. So I did that, I sent them in. This is where the issue lies. So I had to repeat some cause some of my levels weren't correct because um, I had caught COVID around that time and I was still recovering from COVID. So I was sick. My body was sick. So I ended up redoing the labs. Um, they came back good, but they kept saying, oh, we didn't get this, these particular labs, like my pregnancy test, my HIV and my BMP. They kept saying they didn't get them. So I retook them, sent them. They still kept saying they didn't get them. So we was going around and around and around about these labs and then my primary doctor's like all your labs are good like you're good to have surgery you have no medical issues all your levels are good like you good these people kept saying they didn't get them so i'm going back and forth they not answer the phone nor are they responding and then they gave me a deadline i was like you need to have these labs in by this day or your schedule your surgery is canceled and this is like literally like 12 days before my surgery so, you know, since I was heated because I have flights book, room book, rentals book, like stuff was booked and paid for. Plus, I dropped 3500 to the surgery center. So, finally, we're going back and forth. I'm threatening them to cancel. Like, I'm going to cancel on y'all. Y'all giving me the runaround. Like, I need to know if I'm able to catch this flight and get this body snatched. Or if I need to not go and waste my time, I don't want to fly there just for y'all to say you wasn't cleared and your surgery is canceled. Since I don't have the time to be playing with y'all. So I'm going back and forth and finally like I'm just like call me. I'm done texting. I'm done emailing. Like I'm writing them on Instagram like y'all need to call me or I'm going to file a dispute with my bank. Um, and since y'all going to run me back my coins. 
So finally, the little lab tech calls me. Remind you, these lab assistants and lab techs are rude as fuck. Rude. The little front desk girls are rude. So she's like, we didn't get it. Like, we didn't get it. Your levels was low. And I'm like, that's my old when I redid it. I'm looking at it. It says my levels are in range. You tripping, sis. Like, you not really reading. She like, no, your level is this. I'm like, no, my level is this. So then I'm like, are you looking at the same thing? I'm like, I sent you an updating one that I did on like June 7th. Like, what are you looking at? So finally, she puts me on hold, come back, puts me on hold again. The whole time, sis, they had my freaking updated levels that I had sent. They had my levels. Like, they had my levels. I had sent that shit like four or five times to that email. She's like, I, I'm sorry. I'm just now seeing all the emails. Like, you're clear for surgery. This was like six five six four days before surgery like nerves was on edge because i had i had to take my kids to houston like sh she was planned so that that was strike number one with the surgery center in itself so fast forward i flies to miami um i goes to pre-op there's a million and one fucking girls there like, when I tell you, when you walk up, like, it's just girls in their robes, in their socks. Like, they're waiting around for surgery. It's girls coming out the building. They just literally just got out of surgery. They high off anesthesia. They getting wheel to their car. So, they send me upstairs to pre-op. I walk in. It's hella fucking girls. It's over 20, 25 girls in the room. Some had surgery. I mean, not some had surgery. Some waiting on surgery for the day. Some, a lot of them doing pre-op. So I filled out my paperwork. I sat there for damn near three hours before they call me back. They call you back. Um, they have you take a drug test. Um, they have you take a pregnancy test. And then they come in this room and they give you a little COVID test. And then she have you stri strip ass naked and she takes pictures of you. Um, you pay your little 521. She's like, you're on call, so I'm going to call you later on today and tell you what time to stop eating for your surgery tomorrow. Um, and then I'm going I'm to let you know what time to come in. So I go, whatever, we go, we out on the Miami streets. And um, they called me probably like mm, six and was like, you need to stop eating at midnight. So I'm like that. So then... The next day, surgery day, they called me at 7.30 a.m. and was like, hey, this is so-and-so from seduction. How far are you staying from the surgery center? I'm like, I'm not far, I'm about 20 minutes. They was like, okay, you need to be here within the next hour. So, blood is boiling. I'm like, bitch, I'm gonna get snatched, but I'm nervous, like, bitch, what if something happened on this table? What if the doctor fucked me up? Like, you know, your mind is like, so I get dropped off at surgery center and to surgery, you wear a nightgown, a robe, compression socks, and slide on shoes. So, um, I get there like 8.30. So, I was literally on call all day. You cannot eat. You cannot drink. You cannot have water. You cannot have an ice cube. You cannot chew a stick of gum. You cannot have nothing. Nothing. And there was so many of us upstairs. They made us sit down in the lobby with the little damn security. Ghetto as fuck. Because it's a damn chop shop. They got so many people coming in and out having surgery. So I literally sat there from 8.30 a.m. all the way to 2.25 p.m. before they call me up to the pre-op room for surgery. Then they tell me, get naked, put on this paper gown. I sat in that room for about two and a half hours before the doctor comes in, so I meet the doctor. He's very nice, he's joking. He like, oh, it's black people in Oklahoma. What do you do? Um, um, he's just, he was very friendly. He was complimenting me, complimenting my eyes or whatever. And he was just very friendly. Like I got a very good vibe from him. He's an older black Caribbean man. So I just got like very, very good vibes. Like he was very warming to me. Like when I met him, I just felt relief. Like I'm in good, like I'm in good hands. Like this doctor finna take care of me for one. I'm gonna make it off this table. And for two, he finna snatch me. So you meet the doctor, he going over your chart, asking about your family history and this, that, and the third, how many kids you had and how many pregnancies, like just going over your medical. Then he um he goes over the risk. So he lets you know all the risks involved with having surgery, all the shit that could go wrong. And then he lets you know what's, you know, like, oh, the infection is 
you know, it's always a possibility possibility that you could have infection with surgery, but he lets you know, like, it's at a very low risk. Like, he goes over all that. He goes over the procedure and what they do and levels of skin they sticking you in and all that. Um, and then he also, since I am a thicker girl, my BMI is high, he gave me a recommendation, like, on a little diet to try or that he recommends. And then he tells you to stand up and get naked. And he takes pictures of your body from the, he takes pictures of the front, the back, your sides, ass naked. And then he marks you up. So then he's marking you with his little marker like you see on TV. He marks you up. And then he's like letting you know, like he let me know, like this is where you having a problem at in your stomach. Like your love handles, your lower stomach. Um, and then like my back, my lower handle love handles like in the back and then he's like um you know with lipo you do have loose skin and all of that so he marked me up thanked me and wished me the best in my career and all the you know little small talk and then he leaves and he's like you know the anesthesiologist will be in here shortly so i feel like i waited another 45 minutes anesthesiologist comes in here and he was like it's go time like we finna put you under and snatch you like period like grab all your shit put it in your little because i give you a little bag and he takes me to the or when i tell you baby heart was about to pop out my fucking chest so they take you to the or remind you you already have the little bonnet thing on um they give you these white compression socks and then the little slippers that you put over your shoes in the hospital and then you just have a gown um on you and you have nothing on under it so they tell me to get on this little skinny little metal table they um strap your arms down remind y'all i am sh when i get on this table i'm shaking i'm just looking up at the light like i'm seeing the white light i'm just like fuck and then all the little like assistants and um respiratory therapists and all of that like they in there they get in the little mask ready like she pulling brand new mask out the pack and girl he stuck that IV in and then she hooked the mask up and she put the mask on me as he's injecting fluid into the IV and they told me like she's like mommy I got you like you good and he was like we're gonna take good care of you baby and she held that mask on me she held it down and he was pumping that in my thing and he said good night baby and literally before I could even count to fucking three it it was lights out black and I felt like I was dreaming but I can't remember my dream and then the next thing I know, I woke up and I was shaking. Like, you so fucking cold after surgery. Like, you just, like, like that uncontrollable shake. You just, like, shake it like a motherfucker. And you got all these covers on you. And you slightly confused because you're looking around. Like, it's like a sleep that you have no recollection of. Like, a confused, like a blackout type of sleep. So, I woke up. I'm like, bitch, where am I at? Why am I shaking? And then it just hit me. Like, bitch, you made it out of surgery, bitch. Like you made it to the flat side like it's lit like you made it out of surgery like that's like the main thing that girls be scared of like aside from getting botched like making it out of surgery like bitch you made it like you're out of surgery so then i'm like shaking then it just hits me like you have surgery and my stomach is like burning and it's super fucking tight and you just like feel like you just got hit by a fucking truck like a big ass fucking f-150 just rammed into your shit like that's how you feel so I'm like shaking. They like, oh mommy, like you up, you made it. They like rubbing me. They putting like these hella warm, they put like three or four warm blankets on me. And then you have like this big old like hose under your blanket and it's like pumping out heat. And it's hot as fuck, but you're so fucking cold. Like I'm just shaking. I'm just like, and she's like, mommy, you ride it's 30 minutes away. I talked to you, mommy. Like she, she on her way. Like she coming to get you. I'm just like, in that 30 minutes took forever. I kept saying, where's my mama? And she like, girl, she on the way. Like, she coming. We already call her. Then I see my little surgery homegirl get rolled in. And she going through it or whatever. She crying because she got a BBL. And she's like, get me off my butt. Let me on my stomach. And she just crying. She's in pain. So finally, she's like, mommy, your ride is here. So they helps me off the table into the wheelchair. They put my little sack of my stuff on me. They rose me, they take me on the elevator, rose me down to my car, and then my boyfriend and my mama put me in a car and we went to the room. 
So overall, I love my doctor. I'm loving my results. He was very professional. I got good vibes from him. He was like talkative. Like we talked about other shit besides um, the surgery. Like we had a conversation. Like I didn't feel rushed when he came in there with me. Now you don't meet your doctor until right before the day of surgery, right before you finna go back there. So that's just the FYI. And that's like with these surgery centers, like in Miami, you are not finna go just talk to this man. Now, if you go to a private practice, you'll it'll be more intimate. But surgery centers, I call them the chop shops. You not finna meet the doctor till he finna work on you. So that's just FYI. But overall, the doctor was good. He was good. He was realistic with the results. He was realistic with my body type. Um, he was good. I got good vibes. Like we joked, we talked, we laughed. Like he was good. He was warm. I felt like I was in good hands. The surgery center sucks. But once I was there, I realized they have a, a lot of young 18, 19 year old girls working the front desk. So their attitudes is nasty. They not really professional. And they just, you know, when you 18, you just don't have the maturity or whatever. So the doctor is good. It's just that the surgery center is horrible because they're overworked they're overworking and overbooking these fucking doctors and that's just the reality of it um so yeah that's overall surgery center they kind of suck the doctor he was good i'm loving my results so far um so yeah that was my experience with him and that was the cost um and everything so as far as surgery um i feel like mentally you need to prepare yourself for surgery Surgery has um, a, plays a very big part on your mental, on your mental. Um, and when I mean mental, like you're thinking like, what if this happens? What if I die? What if I'm botched? What if like your mind is going a million miles a minute? And if you have surgery, nine times out of 10, you in these surgery groups. So you're seeing girls that get botched, girls that get infections, girls that die. And like you seeing all this crazy stuff. So like mentally it fucks with you. Um, you're very like you get anxiety you get nervous like all of that and then also after surgery so you don't always come off the table like you're not gonna see your full results I say they say up until like four months after surgery so you're not gonna come off the table snatched some people do some people don't like of course if you're smaller you're gonna come snatched for the most part but like you don't see your full results like you you see your results gradually like when i came off the table my stomach before surgery my stomach was not saggy after lipo they lipo sucks everything out so your stomach is saggy like it's hanging it's like dead skin that's why you have to compress so that fucks with you because you're like damn I, i'm going through all this pain and my shit don't even look like it's supposed to look but just trust the process like i'm eight days post-op and my fucking stomach is flat like my love handles are gone like you know like i'm satisfied and it's only gonna get better so that and then financially like i said make sure that you have the money to cover yourself do not break yourself do not go into having this surgery and you only got enough to pay for everything like make have cushion make sure you got the money to properly get your aftercare it don't make sense to spend six seven thousand dollars to not even have the money to do the aftercare because that's like the main part of surgery your massage is like that's key wearing your faha that's key like so um that um what else um be prepared for the hate the hate is real i can't tell you since i announced like that i had surgery or that i was back from surgery or whatever and posted a little video here come all the freaking facebook posts like the shade like just get ready for the hate just know as long as you did the surgery for you to make you happy to help you with whatever flaws insecurities you felt like you wanted to fix or that you just couldn't live with no more just just be able to accept that and not let people get to you because girl people is gonna shade you sis and you just have to overlook because it was a few times i typed a few statuses and my best friend and my dude was just like you did this for you like you been wanting to do this like you did this for you you didn't do it for them and so what if they got some shit to say like fuck them it's not about them it's about you you did what makes you happy you're happy with your results so why the fuck you care about somebody 
So that's another thing. And I know a lot of people don't have thick skin, so stuff like that will get to them. But just get be prepared for the hate. And sometimes the hate will come from people closest to you. I'm lucky I didn't experience that. Like, everybody around me was very, very fucking supportive. But just get, pre get prepared for that. Like, the little shade from for, uh, certain friends or family or whatever. So get prepared for that. Um, but overall... Um, that's like my experience. That was my review. Um, I just want to say, um, if you're going to do surgery, do your research. Um, actually look up these doctors, see if he has death, see if he's known for having infections, see if he's known for botching girls. Um, you know, like just really do your research. Don't go off pictures off Instagram because of course these doctors are only going to post their best work. So just do your research and most importantly, do it for you. Don't do it because it's a trend. Don't do it because you think this is what's going to attract um, men or this is what's going to get you to this next level on the internet. Like, no. Get the body because it's something that you want to fix by yourself and it's going to make you happy and that's what, you're, that's what you want to do. And that is my advice. That is my experience um, with having surgery. Like I said, I'm still very much in the healing phase. I'm eight, eight days post-op, but I am loving my results so far. I am happy. I'm happy that I chose him. And yeah, I hope you guys like this video. I will be... Um, doing a little a vlog a little pop out video i'm definitely gonna pop out i'm gonna do something big on ig like a cute little video or a photo shoot um probably when i'm about a month post-op to show y'all my results um i post little clips on the internet but i don't really want to pop out so i'm fully healed like i'm still swelling still very much in a little bit of pain and uncomfortableness so I'm going to show y'all the body soon. Like, I'm going to pop out in a major way. But, yes, thank you guys for watching. I love y'all. And I will see y'all in my next video.